Hello, in this video I'm going to go over working with lists on the Casio FX CG50 graphing calculator. Now the main way that we interact with and add lists is in statistics mode, number two. As you can see here, I have some data, T against G, and I've entered this into the calculator. But oh look, I've missed one. I've missed off 2.58. Now I could delete this one and and this one and then add it in, or I could go insert and add in an extra one here um, to work with. Notice also that we can sort lists. So I can sort descending, list number one, and I can sort it ascending again. But notice that it asks how many lists I'd like to sort. If I click sort descending and select two to sort two lists, I can then select the base list list 1, and the second list, list 2, and it will now sort both list 1 and list 2 based on the values in list 1. And I can undo this again as well. As follows. You can also jump to the top and bottoms of lists, which can be handy. Now, I actually need to code my uh, G data here into log G. So of course I could just go into run matrix, and do log 1.04 and log 1.49, 1.49, and so on. But there's a faster way. I can actually do log shift list two, and that will log the entire list for me. I can so this reveals something else. We can access list in run matrix by shift one and then whatever number the list is. And you can do operations on them, just as normal as I did up here. We can then assign our answer, list ants, which we could type manually just by doing shift one, shift negative, and we can assign that back into sh uh, list two. Returning to list two, we see that it now has the coded data. You can also access individual items within list. For example, shift list one, shift plus for square bracket, two, shift close bracket, will get me the second item of that list, which is a five. But there's lots and lots more we can do with lists and run matrix. Clicking option and then F1 brings us to the list menu. Here, clicking F1 will get us the list um, symbol, character, that we could also get from shift one. Notice here, list to matrices. If you, um, you've you done mat uh, matrices before, then you'll be familiar with these. Here you can enter a number of lists. I'll do both of the ones I've got to find, one and two. And it converts it to matrices, uh, matrix, as follows. And you can use that for whatever normal matrix stuff you would do. Dim, list one, gets me the number of items in the list, in a list. I'll skip um, fill and seek for now and go on to min. Oh. I'll skip fill and seek for now and go on to min, which is pretty self explanatory. Gets you the minimum element of a list. And max does exactly the same thing. However, I would like to point out that you can specify multiple lists. And it will get you. Uh, in, instead it will get you the maximum list so um, list 1 is always bigger than list 2 so it's giving me that the bigger list you can find the mean of a, of a list the mean of multiple lists and the same with the median you can also augment a list and this means to join two lists together I'll do this with list one and two, and two, and I get this new list, which I will assign back into list three, so I can work with it later. Moving on, we now have sum. This calc uh, calculates the sum of every item in a list, and product, 
which calculate the products of every item in a list. Now, you also sort cumulative, and this is very helpful, as it calculates the cumulative value of each um, of each item in a list. So, that, this is best understood with an example. Running cumulative of list 1 returns 3, 8, 14, 22, 31, 42. 3, then we have 5 as our second item, 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 8, 22, plus 9, 31, 11, 42. So this can be very helpful when creating cumulative frequency charts and similar. This percent sign calculates the percents that each item in a list um, takes up. So again, this is best understood with an example, and I'm going to create a new list for this. Just simply containing 1 and 2. List 4. Returning and running percent of list 4 returns 33.3 recurring percent and 66.6 .6 recurring percent. Because our list contains 1 and 2, and 1 is a third of the total, and 2 is two thirds of the total. We then also have delta list, and this cal calculates the difference between each item in a list. And here we don't include the this shift one list um, symbol. We, instead, we just leave it as list delta list one. And it gets us the difference between each item. So the difference between three and five is two. Between five and six is one. Between two and uh, six and eight is two, and so on. This can be very helpful when working with sequences. But we've got more uh, to help when working with sequences. We can in fact define a new list based on a sequence using the sequence keyword. Here we use x as our variable. So let's say we've got a sequence to find us 2n plus 1. We're going to replace n with x. So we'll have 2x plus 1. And we want this for x with a starting value of zero let's uh yeah zero and the top value of ten we run this i could listen to that oh with a step of one and we've now got a list that uh has the elements in the sequence the zero element is one the first element is three and so on and we can then assign this of course back into let's say list five and then just to demonstrate, we can go to delta list of five, and it gives us the differences all as two. There's another way that we can define a list as a sequence. Um, and to do that, we must go to table mode number seven. Here, I've already got a function inputted, x squared minus one. We click F6 for table, and it gives us all of the values. It also gives us um, the rate of change but we're not interested in that. We just want this one. We can then click Option and F1 for List Mem. And we can select a list to store it in. I'll click, uh, select List 6. Returning to Stats Mode, we can see that List 6 now contains the sequence we've just defined in Table Mode. Returning to Run Matrix, there are a few other ways we can create lists. Firstly, you can just define them manually using the curly brackets, which is shift multiply and shift divide. You can then use comma as the delimiter to get a list. And I'm going to um, assign this directly into list hmm, nine. Um, Another way of creating this is with the dim keyword. Now, at first glance, this doesn't seem like it'd be useful uh, for creating lists. It simply tells you the number of items in a list. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what it returns. The dimension of list nine is six. But we can def we can set the dimension of a list just like setting any other variable. So to demonstrate, let's say I want to create an eight element list. I click eight arrow, dim, list, I haven't used eight, eight, and it's now created an eight element list, all containing zeros, in list eight. 
So why would that be useful? Well, you can combine it with fill to fill a list with any number you want. So now list eight is filled with fives. And there we have it. That is an overview of working with lists on the Casio FX CG50 graphing calculator. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.